It is necessary that the handmaids can continue to support women and girls who suffer various types of violence, human trafficking, refugees, migrants, and others, and who are marginalized by society because the COVID-19 pandemic has opened our eyes to all that reality of pain and suffering that exists in our world, and we need to embrace these open wounds of women who suffer. 1. Women as considered in theological sources. From the beginning, man and woman were created in the image of God. Both receive the same gift, neither sex has more dignity than the other. God created us out of love, with the purpose of making us daughters and sons through Jesus Christ and sharing his life with us. He gives us the means necessary for this purpose to be fulfilled this vocation to union with God is the ultimate reason for human dignity and expresses the content of salvation. In a world that promotes individualism, it is important not to lose sight of the fact that God does not want to save us in isolation but by constituting a people. And this people needs to cultivate relationships of belonging among its members. We see this sense of belonging in the first couple. Upon meeting Eve for the first time, Adam is filled with joy and exclaims, She is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. Companionship and complementarity mark their relationship. They become one flesh, which highlights their radical equality. By being clothed with Christ in baptism, the reasons for discrimination against different groups of people are eliminated, and the radical equality of everyone is made manifest, without annulling differences by baptism itself, every person is called to collaborate in proclaiming and building up the kingdom of God. The chosen people of God is one, one Lord, one faith, one baptism sharing a common dignity as members from there. Regeneration in Christ, having the same filial grace and the same vocation to perfection, possessing in common one salvation, one hope and one undivided charity. There is therefore, in Christ and in the Church no inequality on the basis of race or nationality, social condition or sex. All share a true equality with regard to the dignity and to the activity common. To all the faithful for the building up of the body of Christ. In the first centuries of the Church, women and men worked side by side in the evangelizing mission on an equal footing. In the greeting, Paul mentions 29 individuals, of whom 9 or 10 are women. He begins with Phoebe, a minister one of the Church of Sencri, a woman worthy of the saints, for she has been a protector of many, including myself, in mentioning the couple Prisca and Aquila, courageous leaders of a local community, for they risked their lives to save me. Rom 16. 4. It is notable that Paul mentions the woman first, because the custom was the other way around. Another leader, Mary, worked hard for you. He designates the couple Andronicus and Junia as illustrious among the apostles, Rom 16, 7. For Paul the term, apostle, which means sent one, is not limited to the twelve, but he applies it to himself and to various other persons, in this case to a woman. It refers to those who are witnesses of Christ and preachers of the gospel. 1. According to the footnote of the 5th edition of the Jerusalem Bible, the title Diakonos in the masculine is applied to Phoebe. It is opted to translate it in this case as minister. Other Bibles translate it Deaconess. Due to prevailing patriarchalism, there was a growing tendency to marginalize women. Woman is considered inferior to man to whom she must be subordinate. She is burdened with all the guilt of the first sin, for which she is justified in being forced into silence and kept in permanent submission, being passively instructed by men without ever being allowed to teach them. Mary's yes resounds throughout the universe as a prophetic voice that consents to God's plan, with consequences for all generations. Pope Francis affirms that there is no salvation without woman, Jesus called the women to follow him, to be his disciples. He had the courtesy to teach them in his own house. It was a discipleship of equals, which went beyond the exclusively masculine rite of circumcision as a sign of the covenant with God, 
from an intimate knowledge of Jesus, women were enabled to participate dynamically in his mission. Mary sat at his feet, and with an alert e, she listened as a disciple in order to also receive a skillful tongue that can speak to the weary words of encouragement. Together with the twelve, a group of women accompanied Jesus on his missionary journeys, with a commitment that went beyond providing economic support to the men, for they actively collaborated in Jesus' mission of proclaiming and bringing about the kingdom. The Samaritan woman and Martha are women who, from their experience of Jesus, profess a profound Christological faith, recognizing his identity as Christ and Son of God, together with Magdalene, the Samaritan woman and Martha are faithful, witnesses to the one who is life. But in the tradition of the church they have almost been forgotten. For long centuries their voice has not been heard because all the emphasis has been placed on Peter's confession of faith, his leadership in the church and that of his successors. This in spite of the contrast between Magdalene and Peter on the morning of the resurrection. When Magdalene discovered the empty tomb, she ran to tell about it, while Peter, believing that Jesus had risen, returned home without proclaiming this great news. In the first centuries of the church, the government was collegial. Then the strength was placed in the hierarchical church, in the church as the perfect society. In the social doctrine of the church, there has been a gradual process of recognition of the dignity of women on the same level as that of men, reflecting at a very slow pace some of the advances in the place of women in civil society, especially since the 20th century. From seeing her as submissive to her husband and tied to the home, she came to be perceived as a person and a partner in marriage, and her human rights were recognized, to work outside the home, to vote, and to participate in social and public life. In 1967, Pope Paul VI appointed a woman as Undersecretary of the Council of the Laity. Pope John Paul Roman II began to speak of the feminine genius and the specific and incalculable contribution of women to society and the Church. In 2004, he chose a woman as Undersecretary of the Dicastery for Religious Life. Pope Benedict XVI pointed out the need for interdisciplinary studies on the relationship between men and women. 23 women auditors participated in Vatican II, including Sister Cristina Estrada. Women auditors have participated in many synods since then, including successive handmaids as well as lay women. 2. Women as viewed from the pontificate of Pope Francis Pope Francis notes, the presence of women must also be guaranteed in the workplace and in the various places where important decisions are made, both in the church and in social structures. There are currently seven women secretaries in various Vatican dicastery. In the Mutu Propria Spiritus Domini of January 2021, Pope Francis opened canonical access for women to the ministries of Lector and Acolyte. The decision to confer also on women these offices, which implies stability, public recognition, and a mandate from the bishop, makes more effective in the Church the participation of all in the work of evangelization. In May 2021 Pope Francis recognized the vocation and mission of catechist as a lay ministry, since it has existed since the first Christian communities. The clericalization of these ministries must be avoided. In our communities, the great majority of catechists are women. In 2016, at a meeting with members of the International Union of Superiors General, a sister asked Pope Francis about the diaconate for women. He responded by convening a commission to study the issue from Deaconess Phoebe and other women leaders in the history of the Church. That commission did not reach a consensus conclusion, and a second commission is now moving forward with the investigation. Women in the Church are a sign of the times. The exercise of authority in the Church by women can be a liberating force for others by promoting teamwork women and men, reciprocity, and interdependence. We must move away from patriarchal forms towards a relationality that leads us to listen to the voice of the vulnerable nine. 3. The theme of women in the general congregations of the Institute. GC 15 calls us to work for the recognition of the dignity and promotion of women. 
We need women who are more capable of giving life. At GC17 one of the key words was woman in the document, put out further into the deep. We want to identify ourselves with Jesus, Lef of the world. We want to reveal his face and follow him closely in his mission, from our very being as women who give life, who nourish, heal and protect. The first decree of GC18 recognizes that illiteracy particularly affects women and girls slash children and increases their exclusion from society, and it commits us to involve ourselves in educational literacy programs. GC19 prioritizes women and children who are victims of human trafficking, with a concrete commitment to Unanima International. The sufferings that we find in our world today the marginalization of women, and so many others cry out for a response which we can give only through our relationship with Jesus. GC20 points out among those who have been wounded, women and children who are more vulnerable and run the risk of being trapped in the snares of human trafficking. We are called to show forth mercy, being women who are free to move, to be involved and to let it complicate our lives, with a universal heart always going forth, letting God dispose of us. Questions for personal reflection. Here are some questions that may help you to reflect and then to share in community. Remember to take notes and write down what you want to communicate. What details from the gospel do you remember that show you Jesus' stance toward women? What resonated with you most about the illumination and supporting materials? How do you feel as a woman in the church and to what does it commit you? The way to share in community will be through listening circle.